Hola, Reyes y Reinas, High Kings and Queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated with the Holy Spirit. If I don't find you excited, I pray that you borrow some of my excitement because today we are going to be discussing and getting deeper into the devotional of um, the scripture from Acts 20, 24, which I'm going to start um, in prayer first. We're going to talk about freeing. We're going to talk about um, liberation. And um, you cannot experience any freedom in any area of your life if you do not experience it first in your spirit. So, in Jesus' name, um, I don't know what is going on with the connection. <clears throat> However, fix the Holy Spirit. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you for us, uh, for you creating us to be exceptionally well, able, pre-qualified, favor, protected, deserving, pre-approved, equipped to be everything that you have equi equipped us to be, that you've created in us to be, to serve, to fulfill, to create. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So um, today we are reading from Acts twenty twenty four, 24. And it reads, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race. And complete the task, complete the assignment, the Lord Jesus has given me, who has chosen me, he's called me. The task of testifying, witnessing to the good news of God's grace. Have your way, Lord. Beautiful, beautiful. Have your way, God. Right now, I just pray that uh, any distractions, any fears... That the power of the, the blood of Jesus Christ, the power in his name, will free us from anything that is distracting us, putting fear in us, that is um, trying to tempt us, that is trying to um, destroy us. We thank you, Father. Have your way. Hijack this devotion. Hijack my mind, my mouth. I want your spirit to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's get free. <clears throat> so the author writes, uh, running free. Many times the Apostle Paul referred to life as a race. The author of the letter to the the author of the letter to the Hebrews did as well, calling believers to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares that traps. Hebrews 12 and 1 um, can give you more on this. That is that. This weights, <clears throat> these weights, whether they are sin or other obstacles that keep us from running our way, keep us from running our race well. The weight might, for instance, be the fact that you are consistently hanging out with the wrong people. We have been talking yesterday, we we're talking about real ones. Um, and that gave us some insight on how to choose wisely. Where to look to get some wise information or instruction is in Proverbs. You can never go wrong with Proverbs. It'll leave you completely revolutionized. Um, or maybe you have reached a plateau in your Christian life and don't know how to get unstuck. Maybe you're in some bondage. Reluctance to accept any faith stretching challenge may be weighing you down, keeping you from growing in your faith. You don't need to be carrying extra weight. Make it a practice to regularly look at your life, to focus, prioritize, reflect. See where you can shed weight, where you can lean out, where you can release things that are um, in your schedule that maybe are taking too much time, where you could be reprioritizing your time with Christ. And cast off anything that is slowing you down. Relationships that turn into situationships are very easy to inform you <laughs> that it's slowing you down and it has expired in your life. I mentioned many times that like milk expires in the fridge and when you open it, it's no longer going to serve purpose in your ingredients or in your life or in your body. It's not going to nurture anymore because it's turned to cottage cheese um, in some way, shape or form. So it's the same way when there's relationships in our lives that have expired, meaning there's blessings in our lives. God sends people, finances. He sends careers. He sends um, somewhere where he's called you to serve, an assignment, a task. Is it saying here the task of testifying? The task of testifying is an assignment. 
to speak on the good that the Lord has done. What have you experienced? What have you witnessed that God has done for you or for others around you or maybe for just someone you know? I'm learning that in Hebrews, um, it's teaching us that pictures are created to inspire us. I've always talked about creating a vision board. Um, I've always talked about the things that you look at. You wake up in the morning, you pray. But there's also going to be where God gives you divine instruction that's going to help you get. When you see something, it inspires you. It activates you. There's some people that you look at their lives and you're like, man, I would really want to have that. Now, don't don't covet. Don't want what they have. But to have something like what they have. But what's meant for you, if that makes sense. It's like you could look at someone's husband or wife and be like, man, they have a good husband. They have a good wife. You don't want their husband or wife. You want someone that's going to benefit and advance you. And that's someone that's going to be equally yoked with you. That's another video. Um, but today we're talking about what we consider our life and what our aims are. What is our schedule? What is our priorities? What are our goals are? And God is calling us to finish the race. Finish your race, not someone else's race. To complete the task, complete the assignment. Many of times when you're starting an assignment or you're starting something, it's wonderful. It's great. It's exciting. When it gets a little bit more challenging, which is in the middle, it gets sometimes boring. Sometimes you lose interest. I, for one, am a person that I can get bored pretty quickly. It's not bored, but I'm just always used to like going, going, going. And boredom is a choice. That's another video as well. <clears throat> but it's saying to complete the task, the assignment that the Lord has given us, that has he, he has called us, he has chosen us, he has set us apart for a testimony, for a task, for an assignment that he's calling us to extend his grace. He gives us grace. We're praying for exceptional, able, favored, um, deserving, pre-approved, equipped. We're, we're, we're praying for all these things and thanking the Lord for them. Thank you, Jesus. However, why is he giving us these things? Why does he want us to wake and have these things? Because he's calling us to be those things for other people. Now, you can't be someone else's peace. And you can't be someone else's joy. However, you can partake in someone else's joy. Because if they don't have joy, they're not going to be able to give you joy. If they don't have peace, they're not going to give you peace. That's another video. I've been talking about that in the, the last couple of days of devotionals. <clears throat> but it's telling us to see where you can shed weight. See where you can release things in your life that are expired. There's going to be a time in the season where the Lord calls you to someone and you're like, man, they're blessing. And then all of a sudden, like some time passes and you're like, I don't think I have the time. And the, I, I even go like this because sometimes there's some people that I'm around and I get kind of like stressed. I get kind of burdened. I kind of feel like I've tried to inspire this person. I try to activate. I try to counsel. I try to advise. I try to love on them. I have been doing everything that the Lord has called me to do in their lives. But for some reason, they're still in the same place. They've plateaued. Excuse me. They've plateaued. <laughs> they've put plateaued and they, they're stuck in a place where they're not going to become liberated. Because the three things that I've learned is um, in our spirits, we have to be regen regenerized, which is a rebirthing something new develops. Liberation is to be free and impartation is a transfer. And I'm learning that if we do not have these things, I literally write these things. They're on my mirror when I'm brushing my teeth, washing my face, getting ready. I put these things in my, my mirror because I want to remember that my spirit is rebirthing. In the middle of everything, it may not feel like that. When trials come, storms, tribulations, all those things come, it's not going to always feel like I'm rebirthed. It's not going to feel like I'm free. It's not going to feel like there's a transfer transfer going on. But right in the storm is where God is with me and where he's developing me, where he is not destroying me. He didn't send things to destroy me. He sent things to give me hope in a future, to develop me. To give me a process of becoming what he needs me to become for the next season, the next task, the next assignment. Um, I was talking to someone close to me in family today and, um, you know, I was telling them like, you know, this season's going to end. This season's going to expire. There's a window of opportunities. We grow. You're, um, you're, there's a year. I mean, there's 365 days in a year, which when that year's gone, you will never get that year again. And it's important for you to look back on your life and look at the things that God has done. And it's saying, I consider my life worth nothing to me because it's nothing if we're not fulfilling the task and the aim and the goal 
to be and finish the race of what your race is or my race is. You can't do my race. I can't do your race. And um, the things that we were learning yesterday about real ones and true friends is I know I can't receive a real one or be, you know, until I am a real one. I'm not going to attract a true good friend if I'm not a true good friend. You might receive someone good in your life, but if you are not good to them, the way God has called you to say, take, take care of them or, you know, acknowledge them appreciate them they're gonna they're gonna go they're gonna leave your life because relationships that are healthy and whole they don't turn into situationships i mean sometimes they can i'm sure um but what i'm learning is that and and here because it's talking about how we're free and my notes here are um psalm 17 5 was brought to my attention yesterday and it reads my steps have stayed on your path i have not wavered from following you and that's saying like my steps have stayed on the lord's path and acts 20 24 which we are reading today um is let me see however i consider my life nothing to me i'm sorry um oh sorry i got confused there. bring it back holy spirit uh let me see So what it's trying to teach us is basically that we're here on this earth for the spread of the gospel of grace of God. We are here to help other people know how good, great, gracious, and glorious God is. And because he is all those things, when we partner with him and we have a rebirthing, it's like in the physical, we have a rebirthing of a baptism. You get dipped in water and it's a physical um, representation of rebirthing, surrendering. But there, if there is no rebirthing in your spirit... You won't have the godly nature, meaning there will be modification. You will make modifications for someone um, or for God. Modifications meaning you, you didn't really have a transformation of your heart. I will tell you that when I was in my single season, I was learning that, you know, when people would ask me, what are your interests? I remember when I would go out, yes, this girl went out um, and people would say like, oh, can I have your number? You know, and I would be like, well, what number? What number do you want? Do you want my number on a scale of 1 to 10 of my faith? Do you want my my um, bank account number? Do you want how many children I have? Uh, how many days I go to church? Um, do you want my number of failings? I would I would ask them, like, what are your intentions? What do you want my number for? What what, what are you going to do with my phone number? And, you know, they would say, looking at me like, what? Like, at that time, they were probably like, forget this girl. But, no, there was some diehard ones that would be like, well, I would like to get to know you. And I would like to go to church with you. And, you know, all these things. But... What God was showing me is that they were modifying their words. They were modifying their actions. Some people went through some crazy modifications to try to pursue me because they had an idea of what they wanted to do with me in their lives. But God, God would put in my heart and tell me like, no, it's me. He, he, does, he doesn't want you to pray for him. He doesn't want for him to go to, to church with you. He wants this, this, and this. And I was like. And that's when you are with the Holy Spirit and he will give you wisdom, knowledge, revelation, insight, and care. So I'm always praying for that for each and one of you kings and queens so you can know and avoid situationships because God wants good for you. And what I recognize is, and in my notes, um, I'm recognizing that I would always think like, why is sin so bad? And why do why is it in the Bible to talk about sin and all these things, right? And I was like, well, sinful behavior, it's like a disease. It destroys and deforms us. And therefore, because it does that to us and we are children of God, it's going to break his heart because his heart breaks for what breaks ours. And that's why he says, may your heart break for the things that break his heart. So therefore, we can save ourselves from being deformed or destroyed because that's what sin's going to do. So I pray that, that gives you great revelation in that area. But um, I pray that we have ethics of the, the Holy Spirit and the only way to have the, the ethics of the Holy Spirit is to be partnered with the Holy Spirit, to have a transferring, transferring, to have a rebirthing. So we will have nature. And nature means that there's been a transformation and therefore you don't have to just think about things that God wants you to do. They're going to come naturally. It's like if someone does you wrong or road rage, you could honk at them, veer them off the road, right? Um, none of us do that though. None of us do that in Jesus' name. He looks. Um... I'm learning now that I don't want to honk because I don't know who's in front of me. I don't know if it's a little old lady. I don't know if it's a mother with crying kids in the back. I don't want to scare someone to where they harm themselves in the car or something. Or if someone has a gun in front of me and they might just want to shoot because they're upset that I honk. So 
those are the things now that I'm learning that the Lord is really, he's changing in me, you know, road rage to have some patience. And if I'm delayed or detoured in my direction to on my assignment, that means that the Lord has put me in a way where he wants me to be delayed because he's protecting me. So that is my nature where I'm learning now that I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, you're delaying me. There's a detour. Somebody's taking a little longer. Now, sometimes it could be mispriority in your scheduling because that has been me. Um, reluctant to get things in order because I'm re recognizing now that I got a lot of things to do and my things have to be done by a certain time because then I got to be a grandma and then I got to be a wife and there's a lot of things that I got to do. But the more, more the important thing is I need to be freed. I need to be liberated in my spirit so whatever assignment and task comes, I won't be jealous. I won't be envious of. Um, I won't. I won't. Jealousy and envy will creep in, and and then you start feeling like, oh, well, if I help them, you know, what's gonna happen for me? Am I gonna have enough for me? No, no, no. We're peer proof. We're equipped. We're prepared. We're favored. We're protected. Meaning that if a human around us that God has called us or put us on assignment for, if they fail you, which they might, God has already. He's already gonna provide for you. He's gonna heal you. So I pray that we get this regeneration, rebirthing, brand new spirit, renewed minds, hearts in Christ. And that we are free. We are liberated from any bondage, from any fear, from any distractions, from any temptations that will distract us or detour us from our assignments and our tasks. Because if we get detoured or distracted or just plain out we're scared to do what God has called us to do then we don't get to be witnesses or experience the good news so how can we give good news and grace to other people if we ourselves haven't experienced it mm, bring your holy spirit so what does it mean when it means to shed weight cast off anything that we're learning right now is relationships that turn to situationships will slow us down situationships are not relationships Another thing is that will give you revelation that the time has expired and this person, this career, this job, this child, yes, even our child, our children can no longer be adding to us. They could be subtracting to us in seasons and reasons. We have different assignments, different tasks, and we only have a certain window of opportunity. It's like me. God has told me there's a certain time you need to bring the devotional. You need to get your life in order as me. You need to prioritize more. You need to wake up early. You need to go to sleep earlier because you need to do this. There's a certain time in a window. I need you to bring forth a devotional. So your girl here is not being reluctant. You pray for her. Pray for her because she's getting things in order and it's hard to practice regularly. And look at your life and reprioritize and refocus because Esme be putting so much stuff on her plate because she thinks Esme is here to save the world. So she gets misconstrued and she puts too much on her plate. So pray for me. Thank you, Father, for the revelation. Um, so I want to share. There's a couple of two quotes that I want to share with you, which is one of our, one of our greatest freedom is how we react to things. It's not what's going to happen to you. It's how you react to what has happened to you. It's like I'm saying, there's someone in front of me driving extremely slow. I'm used to like honking or veering around to go faster. The Lord is healing me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm like, okay, I'm not going to honk. I'm going to wait, Lord. I'm going to wait. I'm going to put my worship music on and I'm going to be patient and be still right here. Even though I'm running late to the gym, it's not that person's fault. It's my fault because I misprioritize time. There it is. That's that natural spirit of conviction where the Lord is telling me like, you're in a hurry. You're trying to take it out on them because you didn't prioritize your schedule accordingly. Pray for me. Maybe that's just me. The second one is the knowledge that comes through meditation. It separates you from the body. It separates you from the mind and it ultimately only you are there as pure consciousness, as pure awareness. That is spiritual awareness. Bring it, Holy Spirit. That is written by Osho. I don't know who he is or she is, but that's some that's some divine wisdom right there. So I pray that these give you some great insight. And um, let me see, because I had... I had a prayer for this. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? My Holy Spirit. Okay. So today's prayer is Lord God, please help me help you help us to let go of each weight. I'm carrying you're carrying and show me, show you, show us how to run a race that will honor you, Lord. Heal us, transform us, Lord. May we prioritize. We want to have the Holy Spirit ethics. And what was I um, learning about ethics? Ethics are well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans ought to do, decision-makings, 
usually in terms of rights, obligation, benefits to society, fairness, and sp specific virtues, which is integrity. To make sure that we have the ethics, a system of moral principles that m are moral to the Holy Spirit. So I pray that that frees someone, that, that liberates somebody in the name of Jesus. Um, and the prayer that I have today is, thank you, Father, for your unending grace. Help me help you to accept your grace and to do the ministry that you have prepared for me, for you, with joy. Give us your strength and wisdom to testify your gospel, your great and good acts and news in our lives. What you have done good and great in our lives, may we not be hoarders of that. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for equipping us. Thank you for this intimate time where we are freed. If we're free in your spirit, Lord, may we bring your spirit everywhere and anywhere that we go in Jesus' mighty name. If you don't have um, a relationship with the Holy Spirit and you want one, um, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for liberating, regenerating my heart, my spirit, my mind. Thank you for liberation, freeing of our heart, spirit, mind, and our bodies of any bondage. And thank you for the impartation and the transfer from you to us and from us to others to give freely with joy the way you have called us to with no fears, with no distractions and no temptations and no nerves. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for ordaining our steps. And we thank you, Father, that sin breaks your heart and therefore may it break our hearts and may we be healed from any sin disease that destroys and deforms us from your image or from your likeness or from being more like you we thank you father for convicting our hearts in jesus name we pray remember kings and queens don't let anyone or anything make you get out of your kingdom out of your air the air that the lord has given you out of your community, out of your family. May you walk in authority and confidence with faith and expectancy to receive from him every day in Jesus' name. King or Queens, thank you for your time. Thank you for this exposure. I pray that the Holy Spirit shines his face upon you, that he comforts you if you're mourning, if you're in loss. Remember that things are removed so things can come. When there's a rebirthing, there's a new coming. Something has to expire and leave our lives. Maybe it's not always joyful and there's not always a good and goodbye. I pray that the Holy Spirit convicts you that you make, you release, and lean out where he gives you conviction. There's someone that the Lord laid on your heart today to be freed, to share this video in Jesus' name. I pray that you're obedient and those who refresh others will too be refreshed. Those who free others will too be freed. Those who heal others will too be free heal others so god bless you thank you for your time invested i appreciate it um thank you for sharing praying liking subscribing i pray that the holy spirit frees you so you can free others god bless y'all bye